You've likely heard how Russia's economy depends on revenues from oil exports. You've also probably heard how U.S. sanctions have been ramped up to choke Russia's war effort against Ukraine. But there's one area equally important to the Kremlin's military output that has so far avoided scrutiny. And it involves a high-tech American manufacturer that may be flouting export controls. With the support of the Pulitzer Center, special correspondent Simon Ostrovsky has this exclusive report. This is the factory floor of Ratep, a weapons manufacturer in Russia that's part of the Almazante holding, which has been subject to U.S. sanctions since 2014, when Russia first attacked Ukraine. It produces guidance systems for anti-aircraft weapons used by the Russian military, and it builds them using equipment made by California-based industrial manufacturing giant Haas Automation. NewsHour has learned Ratep is just one of several sanctioned enterprises in the Russian arms industry that have been supplied with precision machining tools manufactured here at Haas's facility in Oxnard, California, in what may represent a breach of American sanctions. That's according to documents filed with the U.S. Treasury and the Department of Commerce late last month. We were surprised that uh, even now, uh, one year after the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion, Haas Automation is continuing its direct shipments to, uh, to Russia. Denis Hutik is an expert consultant with the Economic Security Council of Ukraine, or ESCU, the group that filed the paperwork with the U.S. government agencies that oversee sanctions compliance. Приветствуем вас, дорогие зрители. С вами Абамет. Вы уже видели новую кнопку у нас на сайте. It alleges that Haas is doing business with the Russian arms industry through Abomet Management LTD, a company in Russia that is its official distributor in Russia and Belarus. Если у вас заканчивается сош в станке, или вам срочно нужен инструмент, и вы его заказали в нашем интернет-магазине и хотите знать, где он. Russia uh, was um, publishing the actual public procurements conducted by uh, for example, Russian military plans, and we saw that Abamat had a lot of customers within the Russian military-industrial complex, including uh, the sanctioned entities. And we even can see the description of the actual products that were shipped by Abamat to Russian sanctioned enterprises. And we see that Haas equipment uh, bought by Abamat directly from the U.S., uh, were sold to Russian sanctioned entities. The ESCU said it spent months combing through Russian government procurement databases and customs records to establish that Haas, the largest machine tool builder in the Western world, supplies multiple Russian weapons manufacturers with sophisticated equipment known as computer numerical control machines, or CNC. Those tools are uh, very accurate because military industry needs uh, very uh, high accuracy and high precision in the production of uh, different parts. It can be um, the uh, parts for the ships, the parts for the aircraft, the different equipment and parts for missile systems, or even uh, radio electronic equipment. They're so good, in fact, that the U.S. military also uses lathes and mills produced by Haas. Russia's own machine tools industry makes less precise and less sophisticated products, so it relies on imports from other countries to keep its factories feeding the war machine. The reason Haas machining tools are so important to the arms industry is because they can take an unrefined hunk of metal like this and turn it into something useful like this mortar round. Notably, both sides of the front line have access to Haas equipment. This plant in Ukraine uses Haas machine tools to make parts for tractors and combine harvesters. But this dual-use technology is versatile and could easily be retuned to make almost anything, including weaponry. We made this bed for a tank-mounted machine gun. This Picatinny rail was milled on our Haas machines. It's used to mount sights, optics, and illumination. We had plans to make these mortar safeties, too. It's all within our capabilities. Haas Vice President Peter Zayerhut denied the company was still doing business in Russia. In a written statement, he told NewsHour that Haas has cut ties with its Russian distributor 
on March 3rd of last year, just a week after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine began. The email reads, Haas no longer supplies machines, replacement parts, or anything else to any companies in Russia. Statements to the contrary are false. But our investigation puts that account into doubt. Customs records reviewed by NewsHour show that shipments continued for months after Russia's invasion began. At least 18 shipments were made to Russia, directly from Haas, worth $2.8 million from March 4th through October of last year. Sanctions or no, Russia's arms industry depends on technology developed in other countries. Agia Zagrebelska is the head of the sanctions department of the National Agency on Corruption Prevention, the Ukrainian government body that sets sanctions policy. She told NewsHour the problem was much wider than just Haas. Germany's Siemens and Japan's DMG Mori are also computer numerical control machine tool manufacturers Ukraine believes to be key to the continuing function of Russia's arms industry. Approximately 70-80% of Russia's uh, machine industry is uh, Western machine, is imported machine. You have no guided missile, you have no tank, you have no rifle, a simple rifle, if you have no CNC machine. According to Zagrebelska, at least two sanctioned entities have displayed Haas equipment in their own promotional materials, including the Vector Research Institute in St. Petersburg, which helps manufacture satellites likely used to track ships, aircraft, and ground vehicles during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Another is the Scientific Research Institute of Electrical Carbon Products in the Moscow region, which makes satellites and electronics. That's in addition to the footage from RATEP we showed at the beginning of this report, which a Russian television channel first broadcast just three months ago. The Ukrainian authorities further believe Haas continues to help maintain the equipment already sold to Russian defense firms with spare parts and software updates. Legal experts believe that uh, the company um, is aware or should have been aware of um, its equipment being used by Russian military plans. If our organization is able to, to trace the links between the Abomat and the Russian sanctioned military plans, that it is surely possible for such a big company, such a corporation as Haas Automation. We are sure that they can um, check uh, what country, what uh, entities will be end user. And if these companies cannot control, I think that they, uh, uh, that they have not right uh, to supply these products and to produce these products because these products can kill people. Now the big question is whether the U.S. government will step in to investigate one of its own leading suppliers of manufacturing technology. Ukraine's ESCU say they hope a penalty would serve as a warning to others who continue doing business with Russia's arms industry. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Simon Ostrovsky in Kiev.